Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today is finally the day. I'm gonna do a video telling you how our fifth year of homeschooling actually went. I had quite a few requests for a mid-year update, and then it got to be like February, then it got to be March, and I thought we're gonna have to have an end of the year review. So that's what I'm doing here today. If you're new here, I'm a homeschool mom of two boys. They are just finishing fourth grade and second grade, and I'm so excited the end of the year has come. We are ready for summer. And yeah, I'm kind of exhausted. We will start with my fourth grader. He did this year for like reading and uh, language arts, uh, you know, all of all of that. We did a variety of things. For language arts, we did first language lessons for the well-trained mind level three. And this was excellent for him. I did a video review of that. You can check that out. I'll uh, link that in the description box below. Also, I did, um, I, I have this video and all my other homeschool videos will be in a playlist that I will also link below. But level three was wonderful, so helpful. He did very well in it. He didn't really like it, but I felt like it was extremely thorough and really prepared him for what is next. He did teaching textbooks for math. He finished a few weeks ago with a 92 or a 93. And this was our second year using teaching textbooks. He did level four and we are ready for level five. And that's, that's the plan for next year, spoiler alert, but we're just gonna keep doing what works. For reading, this is kind of sad. So I had planned to do Drawn into the Heart of Reading for him. This is from Heart of Dakota. I was going to use this for him uh, this year and it, we just, we did what, like four pages in the first book. It's a fine book. It really is. It really is. We just had a, a tough time getting into it and I decided that I wanted to give him a little bit less structure in his reading and let him pick whatever he wanted to read and you know what that worked the best for us so really he just read one book after another he reads because i tell him to read but i let him read what he wants to read and i don't really get much of a fight with that and so there's that so long story short we didn't use this maybe we'll use it again maybe i'll use it with the other one i don't know <laughs> We'll just have to see about that. Another thing that was kind of disappointing that I spent money on last year was the More Than Words Bible curriculum. Uh, we ended up not using this. We went maybe like six weeks in it. And uh, he did fine in it. I really feel like he could have done the next level up. Um, but there was more work put into Awana this year. And in my opinion, <laughs> Awana is so fantastic and I think it serves as a really great Bible curriculum and it's done at church. And so I, um, I don't know, I, I, it would have been good to use this too, but I felt like Awana was enough, plenty. So yeah, and I'll say that for, for, for both of the boys. Um, Brayden really, really excelled in Awana this year. He finished his last year of Sparkies. I can't believe I no longer have a Sparky. He finished all of the books that they had and even some extra credit books. And I credit his, um, his amazing teacher, his leader. I want to cry when I think about her, but um, yeah, she was so wonderful working with him and uh, getting him to open up a little bit because uh, he's kind of shy. <laughs> but we're so thankful for the Awana program at our church and that kind of fit as our Bible curriculum. And I would like, like it to be like that next year. I'll have two kids in TNT next year. That's wild. Uh, for history, we did Story of the World, Volume 1. And I liked this a lot. My boys like it when I read aloud to them. And this, I mean, honestly, I don't understand why people get the audiobook version of this because, I mean, it's not a lot of reading aloud. It's really not. It's not that much at all. And uh, yeah, I think the, the only thing that can make this curriculum long is if you do every single like craft project. 
I don't think we did any craft projects. And let me show you this. Okay, I'm gonna give you a hack right here that's going to save you some money and save you some time and some energy. And I, I bought the Story of the World activity book and teacher edition, or teacher's guide. They put it in one big book. You can go online, like I did, uh, for the, from the Well-Trained Mind, and order the activity book, just the papers. You can order that, you know, if you have more than one kid. But I just thought it was really weird that they they bind um, in like a regular book. They bind the teacher's guide and um, the activity book in in one. It's it's just weird to me. So basically, it comes it comes like this, but all in one book. I went ahead and got next year's. I found it. For $19.99 half price books, you guys. So this is how it comes. You get the, the activity pages and this, the teacher's guide in one huge book. I don't know why they do this. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. So what I did, I took this to Office Depot, have, had them cut it in half basically, and I had them bind the teacher's guide and then bind the activity book. And then, um, ugh. It's in another binder. I ordered just the loose leaf pages from the well-trained mind, hole punched them and put them in a binder for Brayden. And so one boy, my lefty, got his in a binder so he could take them out and, and use the pages individually. Whereas Caleb, who's right-handed and doesn't have an issue, um, just used the, the bound copy, the spiral bound copy. So I don't know if that clear as mud. <laughs> But they, I, I thought at Office Depot they did they did me a huge favor here. So now I could, if I wanted to, sell this. I don't know if I will. We may go through it again when we cycle around to it. Yeah, it was $8.95. $8.95 to get these separated and bound, even with the you know plastic copy. So that worked out. That worked out great for us. However, here's the thing with the with volume one. I was doing this with a fourth grader or second grader who were 10 and eight most of the school year. Um, my, my older one, who likes to, to, to color and stuff, he, he, uh, he kind of liked the coloring. My younger one, he hated every second of the, he didn't want a coloring book. So what we did instead, I bought the Usborne Encyclopedia of World History. Let me show you that. That's this right here really good however if uh you don't believe in evolution if you are a young earth kind of person uh the very beginning is is not gonna be for you <laughs> um yeah that's just that's just how it is it didn't really align with our views but the rest of it very good and we also bought i got this used on ebay because it's very expensive the kingfisher illustrated history of the world use this this monstrous book and youtube videos and some of the documentaries here and there and uh so yeah they're not really into coloring and everything that doesn't really speak to them so we just at some point at one point i just let's read about it talk about it watch a video and that worked for us and so yeah we plan on doing it again next year in volume two and uh see how that goes but yeah so that is history that was a long story um what else let's see so that is my fourth grader my second grader also did the history with us he uh for math we use kind of a variety of things i've talked about this in another video about trying to figure out what works best with his brain <laughs> And he's a very hands-on kind of kid. And, uh, but I learned about halfway through the year that he responds very well to um, computer games and things like that. So in like January, February, we started using for reading and math, we started using reading eggs. And after a while, I found that reading eggs was a little, um, it was too easy for him. He he knew how to, he knew how to, you know, the sounds and everything. He knew all of like the basic phonics. So I moved him on to fast phonics and that worked out beautifully. You know, when he gets something right, he gets a way to go or a bling of a, a bell or something like that. And he responded really well to that. He responded well to the, the little games that it had. 
So we've just been doing that. I can do a whole video about reading eggs and fast phonics uh, if, at another time if you would like to see that because it's been really, really good for us. We've also been using Math Seeds for him. And Math Seeds is from uh, Reading Eggs. It's the same company. And again, he responds well to that. He's picking up the concepts pretty well. And also it's something he can do on his own. They test him, they give him quizzes just to you know make sure the progress is being made and it reports back to me, even though I'm usually either next to him or at least in the room when he's doing it. For handwriting, he was in occupational therapy um, most of the year and or actually half of the year because uh, we, we stopped going uh, right after Christmas. And he did a lot of handwriting with her, actually, with his therapist. And we did some handwriting without tears. He loves to write things. Let's see. I'm talking about you, Bear. He likes to draw and, you know, all sorts of things. This is just at the schoolroom table. He's writing. That's another thing. Here's another one. What does that say? The bad guy. Um, yeah, he loves to, to draw and make his own make his own movies. We love Spider-Man. Brayden, no way home. But he copies a lot of things and it's just it's just fun. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. And of course, if you're new, be sure to click that red subscribe button. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Any questions that you have, please leave those down in the comments or any comments, um, if you can be nice, <laughs> put it down there. And I hope to see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.